leader. Leader is enough. Welcome to today's show, uh, and my name is Emmanuel Odeke. As usual, you know, and you're sure every Tuesday I'm definitely here and reaching lives. And today we'll be discussing serious stuff concerning family, concerning parenting. Don't forget Sunday was Mother's Day. And I'm hopeful that you sent your mother mobile money, not putting her simply on the status. Uh, you should have sent some mobile money to your mother and not just dropping her on the status. And perhaps some mothers don't have smartphones to check your status. So, uh, but they can check on their Mapesa, Chipesa phone, how much money has entered their phones. <laughs> Welcome to this episode of Let's Talk. And uh, it's a joy that we can be here today. I'm joined with uh, a serious lady. And uh, we'll be discussing thriving families. Her name is uh, Charity Mbabazi Biarugaba. Definitely you want to know she's a missus. And so uh, I want to suggest that her husband is called Biarugaba. Uh, oh, <laughs> Of course. Uh, so, uh, you got it right. Yeah, her husband is called Biarugaba, and she tells me she has uh, four lovely children. Uh, she has four lo two boys, two girls. Uh, I think I'm also running that way, <laughs> though my speed is a little bit slow. Um, <laughs> no hurry. <laughs> I am still in slow range. I still have one handsome boy. Actually, he's a hunk. If you see this guy, you want to book him for your daughter. <laughs> but booking him for your daughter, that means you have to deposit some 10 cows in advance. <laughs> <laughs> so that is what today we'll be discussing, thriving families. And my guest for today is Charity Mbabazi Biarugaba. Charity, would you like to say hello to our viewers? First of all, thank you very much, Emmanuel. Mm. Nice to meet you. Nice uh, to have met you earlier. Good evening, viewers. It's a pleasure and joy to be here with a fellow parent. Oh. <laughs> I think we can just start it like that. It's a pleasure to be here mm. talking about families. I'm looking forward. I hope that what I share will add value no. to a parent, Sure. to a, an upcoming parent, to someone who is not sure whether they are on the right track. Yeah, so it's a joy to be here. Well. That's interesting. So today we'll be discussing thriving families, but we'll pick it, for, pick it up from Mother's Day, which was Sunday, mm. and then dash to yesterday, which was uh, uh, an international day of families. And then that, that should be able to, to give us uh, the, 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 the ground for our discussion today. Mm. Mm. Uh, let's pick it up from Sunday. Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. Is it about putting putting those 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 beautiful old women uh, on, on on our statuses? Uh, my mom is pretty beautiful, mm -hmm. even at her age. She's mm. fifty nine. Mm. She made fifty nine a few year, a few few months ago. No, no, in April. In April. In April. Mm. Uh, but she still looks very beautiful. Surprisingly. Of course, she's and your mother. Away from being my mother, <laughs> she is. Ah. Uh, so, mm. what do you want me to say? So, to talk about mother, Mother's talk, Day? Uh, let, let's start from the Mother's Day. Okay, so, let me start with a joke. Mm. <laughs> On Sunday, I, I happen to have visited an uncle of mine who is very close to me, Mr. Henry Biamjisha, if you're watching, greetings. And he asked me, so is every day Mother's Day? The other day you were having Mother's Day, so he confused Mary's Day, and Women's Day, Mother's Day. <laughs> He's like, is every day Mother's Day? Because for him, it was like, what's going on here? My children and other children who are visiting my auntie decided to, to sing, instead of singing, of singing Happy Birthday to you, they sang Happy Mother's Day to you, and the whole house got on fire and my auntie auntie lois came out you guys you know were so many mothers around mm. but because she was the one in the house they sang for her happy mothers Day. and she's like you people I, uh, you know, I took the show it was like this is the real yes thing. so mm. back to mother's day mm. in uganda we follow the british calendar because mother's day in uganda is celebrated in may but i think in in uh, in america it's celebrated in either March or April. March, I think March. Mm. So you can easily get confused. But for Uganda, it's always May. Mm. Why is this day important? I mean, mothers are celebrated every single day of the year. But when you stop to celebrate one particular day, 
then you stop to thank God for the gift of motherhood. When you talk about the gift of motherhood, what does it represent? For me, the gift of motherhood represents life, giving life. Because mothers receive a seed, receive a seed from you people. Uh -huh. We receive a seed mm. and we take care of the seed. By the grace of God, God gives us, God built our bodies to receive and to, and to keep what has been put in our care. So for nine months, a good mother takes care of herself so that the child that is in her womb grows to full term. Mm -hmm. And after the nine months, presents this child to the world through giving birth. Mm. After that, they have to present this child again to the world much later as an adult to add value. Mm. Today you're adding value to Ugandans. You are speaking on national TV about families. Mm. That means that beautiful lady you were talking about earlier, your mother, did a good job mm. in receiving you at the point of conception, in making sure you grew in the nine months. You know when we are pregnant, they tell us, do not take alcohol, do not smoke, do not do all those things that they tell us. Pray. I prayed a lot when I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. I prayed a lot. I, I love that topic of motherhood. There's a book I always recommend to mothers mm. to be. It's called Supernatural Childbirth. Since you're still on baby number one, <laughs> please look for that book when you go to number two, number three, number four. Supernatural Childbirth talks about different mothers who struggled to have their babies, you know. Some, 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 some mothers have their children easily, you know. You get pregnant and have a child. Other people have to go through assistance, you know, medical assistance, mm. ETC. Mm. Others, surrogates. It's not by choice. Mm. But every woman loves to be a mother. Exactly. What is it about being a mother? It's about the nurturing spirit. Mm. We have the ability to nurture. The ability to raise something out of nothing. When you look at that baby, at the point they give us that baby, when we look at that baby, we're not just seeing a baby. We're seeing the next leader. We're seeing the next president. We're seeing the next teacher. We're seeing the next doctor. We are seeing the next best musician. We are seeing the next best footballer. Mm. So you can't tell a mother. Not forgetting the best presenter. Of course. <laughs> That, so that's why mothers need to be celebrated mm. because they do so much. When we meet Emmanuel, the presenter, mm -hmm. there is so much that has happened in the background. Mm. Not with the mother alone. Please note, I am not an advocate for mothers alone. No. I'm an advocate for family. Strong advocate for family. So when we say we are celebrating mothers, yes, we stop to thank the mother. But I remember on my status, I posted, you know, I posted my own mother. And I said, you're not just my mother, you're my best friend. She's also my best friend. Then I posted my mother in love mm -hmm. and I thanked her. I thanked her, much as I'd called her earlier. I put it on my status. I thanked her for what she had done in raising my husband. Mm -hmm. Because I met a grounded man. I met a man who could love me and appreciate me for who I am. If I hadn't met that man, I wouldn't be here now. Another man would not allow you at 9 p.m. to be in family TV, talking on national TV. Mm -hmm. But because he's grounded and he knows the value of the wife that he married, you know? Mm. That is the work of my mother in love. So I thanked my mother in love for that. Then I thanked myself because I've also raised four mm -hmm. children. And then I went a bit ahead and I thanked my husband. I posted myself with my husband and I said, I thank this man mm -hmm. for giving me an opportunity to be a mother. I always used to pray for that as a young girl. And if a young girl is watching, pray for your husband. Mm. Yes, pray for the husband you'll get married to so that you can have children that you will love, mm. children that you will raise together. There is nothing, there is nothing like a mother will raise a child alone. Yes, those moments are there, but they also have support. You know, there are those people who are single moms, they have support. Mm. There are those people who are in families, they have the husbands. So we cannot celebrate a mother in isolation. Mm. A mother needs to be celebrated in 
the space of a family. I hope I've answered it. Exactly. Actually, speaking about prayer, I, I was amazed. I went to one of the girls' schools, yeah. famous in, 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 in this city, and I was amazed that at their tender age, mm -hmm. senior one, senior two, senior three, mm. the, the chaplain there, mm. together with the leadership, asked mm. them mm. to pray for their husbands mm. to be. Mm. Now, at, at that tender age, mm. somebody who is not mature will think this is crazy. But that is very, that is very profound. It's very interesting that but you I need was, to I'm pray for... Those who started praying for my husband. As young as... Yeah, as young as that. And, and you know it is amazing, just imagine if you... But when they would tell us to pray, uh, they would also tell us, I think it's in Song of Songs, do not awaken love before it's time. Mm. Yeah, so don't awaken it. Pray for the gentleman, but don't go looking, is it Emmanuel? Is it John? Is it... You, do you understand? Mm. So would pray and that's it. Leave it with God. Exactly. Uh, the point I was trying to point out here is this. Just imagine a well-brought-up girl, properly polished, pruned well, styled up, mm -hmm. and you land on a crook. What family that would be? A total God will not allow mess. It. A total <laughs> mess. But anyway, <laughs> away, away from that a bit. Yeah. Uh, not to scare those who are yet to become mothers and those who are still young, yeah. but for you to understand that everything has a price to pay for you to get into there. What are the challenges that come with motherhood? I totally understand the beauty There's of the... holding that child <laughs> and the happiness. Yeah. I am speaking as a father. I have a, I have a, I have a boy. <laughs> I have a boy in the house and, and it's just fun. Every morning I look at this guy and I'm like, you touch this guy, you kill me you fast. Me. <laughs> so what, what are the challenges that come with this? Not to be negative, but mm. to alert somebody that uh, be ready for this and, and, and prepare for it so that it doesn't go extreme. Mm. So first of all, the first challenge I would say is between the husband and the wife. Mm. That's, for me, it's the first challenge because we were raised from different communities. So you meet this gentleman and you meet, the, the, the two of you meet and you start a family. Mm. Your value systems may not have been the same as you are growing up. So the first challenge is to be able to, to work out, you know, work out what works for you. Most especially if you've married from different tribes, different cultures. Yes. Mm. So there's the tribe bit. There's the social status. Mm. Some people never move from their social status. You know? Yeah. You, <laughs> you can get married to this gentleman mm. and you came from a family that is so rich, you know, and in your home, like your parents' home and whatever, cars are packed, etc., etc., and then you get married to this guy and... And really, he doesn't have much. Not because he he wanted not to have. Yeah, but you fell in love with him. Yeah. So to balance that and say, okay, now I have started my family. Bambi, many, many people struggle. So for me, it's the first challenge. Because you come with your mindset of this is how I'm going to raise my children. And true, I'll tell you a personal testimony in regard to that. Because I like to tell real things, not from my head, head knowledge. Um... When, when our first daughter, Emanuela, was going to primary school, nursery it was okay, but primary school, I, I wanted a particular class. I really wanted a particular class. And so I wanted Aga Khan. I'm mm. like, our daughter is going to go to Aga Khan. And my husband, I like him. He, he always listens to me. And he first leaves me to be comfortable with my decision, like be happy with it, mm -hmm. like enjoy it, believe that it has mm. happened. But at the end of the day, he's the final <laughs> <laughs> decision maker. So I also like how he draws me in. And I, I want to tell men, learn how to draw in this wife. So this is what he did. He told me so charity. Imagine that drive. So that time we were living in Bukoto. So he was telling me, imagine driving from Bokoto to Old Kampala. And Everyone. you think about that jam. And that time I was working at Monitor. So, madam, you drive, in your mind, drive from Bokoto, go to Old Kampala. Old Kampala then and go and then work at, at Monitor and arrive by 7.45. 
at work. At work. And then also in the evening, do the same round, pick the child, drop. And remember, P1, P2, they you drop at lunch time. How much time do you have to, to live that life? To run around with that. I sat down and all my other kind of dreams are like, he's right. <laughs> he's right. <laughs> he's you, right. You started dropping the, the dream slowly. It just crashed, not in a bad way, in a good way, with reasoning. Because we are two adults, and the good thing is we are good friends. So me and my husband are friends. Before husband, husband and wife were friends, <laughs> boss. Let's put this on the table. Mm -hmm. So then now he said vis-a-vis, -vis, I work at, that time he was working at the Sheraton. I work at the Sheraton, we put them in Sapuruka, we put them in Sapuruka, go and Even if fire, but like, eh, let's assume, God forbid, Sapuruka is on fire, I will fly. In two minutes, I will be picking my daughter out of that school. So now tell me, madam, do you still want Aga Khan? I said no. You surrendered? I surrendered. So number one, class. It's okay, so just this decision making as a mother. Because you can clash with a guy on principle. You can clash with your spouse on where you came from, what you're used to, what you're comfortable with. The other challenge of motherhood is not accepting that things have changed. You're now a mother. You can no longer come home late. You people, I used to go home early. I, this, this business of allowing talk shows, it's now. My children are old. I never used to go home late. Never. When I would be late, it would be that it's a work job. It's, I can't do without it. It's monitor is launching a big something and I must be there because I'm brand manager or whatever it is. So you also have to realize that, you know what, the new challenge now is your mother. Your child needs you. But anyway, would the breasts allow you to stay, stay wherever you stay? Longer? No. Because this person will be saying, please, go home. But, but also away from that, uh, uh, um, of later, just I think a week or so mm. ago, mm. a friend of mine got married. So we, we, we um, he's so, so close. Yeah. So he called, he called us home and he wanted to open the gifts and, uh, on Sunday. Yes. So we, 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 we went, there, went there with a friend or two. Mm. And uh, I, I asked him a simple question of what I felt when I just got married. Mm -hmm. How does it feel? You're used to being in a family where you, there's a lot of noise. You have mommy, you have brother, da, 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 da. Mm. and now you have two adults in this. Mm. Uh, the and other then there's a baby who has just joined you crying at night. It's a whole, it's a whole world. So it, it, it is something new that takes, I don't know what it takes, but you, you just have to face it and get used yeah, to it. Yeah, so as a mother, uh, the other challenge is there is now the technology challenges and what it means, what it introduces to us. Uh, there is all this um, neighborhood, depending on where your child is being raised, mm. the influence from the, neighbor, the neighbors and all. There is the challenge of how do you introduce Christ to the children. To the children. It's also a challenge. Because you're used to reading your Bible alone. Do you know even just the, 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 just the two of you reading the Bible together is a challenge? Yeah, so now these uh, children have come up. Yeah. And the list goes on. Mm. Plus the cost uh -huh. of being a mother. Pampers. Goodness. <laughs> Powdered milk and whatever. Who, who, who carries the cost? Is it the wife or the husband? Those are all challenges, but they are good. Yeah. Uh, so, the, so even your budget, you know, if you're used to buying 10 handbags, let's see if you buy them now. And, and they just fall in place. You just find just yourself... You, you find yourself in the line alone. Mm. My, my wife, I, I just hope she's, she's busy with the boy. <laughs> 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 she really loves dresses. She loves style. Every weekend she would come home with a, a dress, new dress. With a new dress. <laughs> uh, this weekend if she comes with a new dress for herself, the next weekend she's bringing me a, a new coach. shirt, yeah. a new jacket. 
Nowadays, <laughs> I agree. You are lying. she appears with either a box of pampers or with a packet of milk for the guy or with porridge for the guy. Things are falling in place alone. And the real challenge, which I'm not talking about, is if the wife actually takes the cost. Some wives act like they don't work. So Emmanuel, with his salary has not changed, mm. but he's now a father. Emmanuel has to figure out how to make sure these needs are met. And that's where the issues of corruption come in. Mm -hmm. Because a person who earns two million has children in Namisunsa, Gayaza, eh, Namiliango, and at the university. But he earns two million and his wife earns 500,000 uh -huh. as a secretary in the office. Uh -huh. So how are they affording? And, and you're, in, you're seeing challenges of motherhood. And, and in this school, they, they give you a draft? Of course. And, and they say without full clearance, the child doesn't appear. So that is the reality of life. Can you afford your life? Can you afford your children's education? At what point do you plan which schools your children would go to? So when your children are still at four years, you start saving. You open up savings accounts for them. You start investing early so that when they're in later years, you're not struggling. You're not cheating the government. Mm. Yeah. There are those you can afford. Yeah. Some, some of us can afford where, you uh, want where our children. children are going. And many couples I know who I'm close to and accountable to can afford their children's education. But we've had to pay a price for very many years. I mean, mm. I'm almost 20 years in marriage. But I've had to drive the same car for the last, is it 12, 13 years? And people laugh at me. I mean, there was a time I was at Monitor, and at one point, I, there's a day I represented the MD twice. I represented the MD at Serena and at another function. And uh, these guys, when we were leaving, they said, eh, acting MD at Swaza. And then I, I, and we're in the car, the car was mine. Uh -huh. And I was the acting MD. And these guys are telling me at Swaza. So I just listened to them. I said, how? I said, I'm not okay. I'm not okay. I'm not okay. No. That time I was <laughs> driving a UAD, not my current car, but the other car. And I, I just listened to them because they were young. And I told them, and so your bus was. And then I asked them a question. Nayamba de I said, yeah, you dressed well. And then I asked them, so when I reached presenting, did I present the M represent the MDW? Well? I said, yeah, you, that one you did well. Never to full me, Akamotoka. Akamotoka. Can you add D? Can you add madam? Uh. Then I asked them, at this point, the TVs and the newspapers have not seen you, AD. They, they've, inter they've, they've worked with my intellect. So I want to tell young people, don't be deceived. Don't be deceived you will pay the price much later. Mm. Drive you a D, drive you a Q. Walk. Who says everybody should drive a car? Walk, but invest. In the that future. child, the boy you're so proud of, will need. Right now, my school fees bill, our school fees bill, I can't name it here, but we will pay that bill comfortably because we've paid the price. But also, why would, why would one take their child to a school? and they are not sure of their wallet mm, to foot the bill. That's that another school. challenge because now there are schools which are there are many of my friends I see and they take their children to really expensive schools and I thank God for a lady called Barbara Katende. I told you earlier about pillars in the palace. So one of our pillars is finance. Barbara Katende once told us at a finance hangout that the teachers who taught us when we were at Uganda Road, they are still there. And Buganda Road, Buganda Road is still teaching the same way it was teaching that time. The curriculum has not changed. So he was, she was saying, some of you seated here cannot afford Kampala parents. Hillside, Nalia. Uh, which other one? Word of, word, that time, word of something international was the one that people were taking their children to. Whatever international schools, some people could not afford. So if you can't afford, why don't you take your child to this school? Where you can afford. Where you can afford. And then, they invest that money for when they're at university, I mean at secondary school, because now you want them to go to Gayaza. Now it's not about, I'm going to leave my child in Kororo Secondary. Over you get what I mean? For that period of time, invest that money so that when they get to 
this other place, they can do it. I'm not saying everybody should do that. I'm saying some people, if you check your finances well, you need to take that decision. And, and it's a very drastic decision. It's by painful. The way. It's a painful one. So it challenges. But also I think uh, some of these schools, anyway, uh, I have my own reservations to that because uh, I, I went to, to a university and I met people from Budo Junior, I mm. met people from Gayaza. Mm. And funny enough, some of us who were from these schools that are not any hard yeah. are, were the consultants yeah. for the guys from Budo and, 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 and you, you, I don't know if you get the point. But that is not uh, the bit the, for The today. point is, just mm. to, to, to put that into context, mm. I think let's not put the blame on the school. Yeah. Let's say that uh, the, a child's education is not just about the school. Exactly. It's also about the parents. Uh -huh. So we don't dump children to schools. Exactly. I always tell parents, don't, uh, don't dump. Just because you've paid school fees, and don't then... dump your child and think that Buddha is going to give you a product. It is you to work on your product. To tune and yes. find Buddha is press. just giving you a community. That a is sense worth, of belonging. That is worth having your child in. Budo is helping you put a foundation on the networks your child has. Because already, uh, when we come to the workplace, me, who went to Nabisunsa, I'm better than you. Who went to your school? The one you've not named. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that school of mine is a serious one. But you get the point. Uh, yeah, yeah, I get the point. So then I would tell parents, so then it doesn't mean we shouldn't take our children to this school. We should take them to these schools mm -hmm. because there is a network. Those hillside, whatever, Kampala parents, network one. Gayaza, Budod, network two. Now level three, Makere University. If you've done a good job as a parent and God has blessed you, please note, you can do your best, but God is the final. He's the, this. He's the final. I always write on my page when children are going back to school. Our children shall be taught of the Lord. It's a scripture I love. Mm -hmm. Our children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be their peace. You need your child to have peace from a young age all the way up. Whether they excel at school or not, let them remain peaceful and happy. Why? They will produce better results to the world. More about that when we return from the break. I'm still here with Charity and we are not about to go anywhere until it's 10 p.m. when we sign out from this show. I'll come back from that short break. I've always told you if you don't break, if you don't take a break, you'll break down. Mm -hmm. So it is better to take a break so that you come back with more energy. So we've had a bit of time to sip some water and then refresh. And now we are back with uh, quite good energy <laughs> <laughs> to finish up the show. <laughs> and we are still discussing thriving families. Uh, my name is Emmanuel Odeke, and I am here with Charity Mbabazi Biarugava, Mrs. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the emphasis uh, of, of the missus uh, should be made just to make sure that those uh, single boys out there don't look at her and start saying, ah, you get a burungi, I like a inama, get a burungi. So um, we are still discussing thriving families and that is what we are doing today. Now, Charity, um, mm. just before we went for the break, I thought we'd have a look at single motherhood. It's a challenge, but sometimes we can't run away from it. What happens there? I know you're not a single mother. <laughs> no, I'm not, but mm. I'll talk about it. Yes. Yes, because I also don't like pretense. Mm. <laughs> I like to talk about facts of mm. life. So sing we have single mothers in these categories. The first one is you lost a spouse. Mm -hmm. Yes. So at that point, you're a single parent. Yes. Yeah. So you're not a single mother, but you're a single parent. Mm. Yeah, you lost a spouse. Number two, there are those who are single mothers out of divorce. You know, you separated. Or, one, out of divorce, or maybe uh, somebody made you pregnant and moved on with their life. Mm. So again, you're a single mother. Mm. Then there are single mothers out of adoption. 
mm. also yeah you know there's that new yeah uh, new way of being a mother mm. through adoption so number one nobody chooses to be a single mother mm. it just happens that circumstances happen and you are a single mother so if you're a single mother should you beat yourself up that you're a single mother no instead you should celebrate first of all that you're a mother mm -hmm. so celebrate that you're a mother and do the roles of a mother whatever a mother would do for their child do it for their child mm -hmm. including nurturing yourself i always tell people you can only give what you have if you're a sad mother you pass on sadness if you're a depressed mother you pass on depression so work on yourself work on your friendships work on forgiveness some people are single moms but they've never forgiven this gentleman did whatever he did to you whenever and he moved on with his life mm. but for you you're still carrying something of 15 years ago and you're passing on all the anger on this child please and the child is totally innocent, innocent. so forgive forgive it life happened mm. forgive the person pray for them I mean, it's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy. Please not. Yeah, I'm only saying it's hard, but work on forgiveness. Work on yourself because when you work on yourself, you're better company. You attract better people. Mm. Everyone will run away from you if you're that irritable woman who has not forgiven, who is who can be still carrying your problems. You want to put all your problems on us? No. You know, so forgive yourself, love yourself, start all over again. Make sure you're in the right community. People who build you. Don't be in communities of people who are rumor mongering, people who have no future, no direction. Find yourself, find your purpose. You know, I, I do coaching and part of the coaching that I do is in transformation. How to transform your life. How to bring out the best version of yourself. So I always tell people there is somebody in you who the world has not met yet. Mm. But you have to meet that person before the world meets that person. And so introduce to the world who you truly are. Right now you're seeing Charity. Charity has had a lot of work done on her through different communities. So even you find a community and let people speak to you truthfully. Uh, when I'm doing the mastermind, I do a mastermind called Die Empty. And in this mastermind, I encourage people in the topic we call Stay Connected and breaking guardedness that find a mirror. A mirror is, you see, when you look at a mirror, it gives you a true reflection of yourself. Of yourself. If there's something in my eye, I'll see it. Mm -hmm. So find a mirror, find a person who will tell you the truth, charity. You, are, you, you have anger issues. I used to have anger issues. Mm -hmm. You have anger issues. Like, why are Zimu and you just scream at everybody? And she said, but now, I'm screaming at all these people for what? The real issue is myself. So work on that, find a community, find people to support you. When you're a single mother, it's important that you model, you help your child to see how a true family looks like. So try and expose them to a family where there's a father and a mother. Find a family that can allow you, because some families are like, ah, Single mama, Jacky Gizavana, a friend, same. But there are families that are accommodative. Mm. Find a family that is accommodative and let your children see what it feels like to have a father and a mother mm. in a home. We once did it for one of our friends who is a single mom. We invited her and her children to our home. I think it was either 31st December, 31st, or something. We were moving into a new year. So they came home. When they came home, we set the dining table and we all sat around the dining table together mm. with them, with my children, my husband, and my friend. We prayed. We ate. After eating, my father, my husband, what he loves the most, because he sits in a very advantaged position. So, my friend, what do you want to be when you grow up? How, are you, how is school, you know? Because he's the father. Mm. Oh my God, my friend told me, Charity, that was one of the best days my children have ever had in life. So please expose the children to that. The children were so happy. They saw us cooking together. I served with their mom. They had never sat in a house with a father. And maybe that could be the one time they will always remember. So now this boy who is growing up knows, hey, 
So daddy sits at the front, daddy, daddy is, you know, daddy's position is this, daddy can ask the questions, he takes leadership, he gets to know. Have you met men who marry girls and they don't know what to do? It's because it was not modeled. If you check carefully, there was single parenting in the picture. So get people to model. Actually, if you can even get a father figure to come, an, an uncle to keep visiting, mm. to take them for, especially their boys, to take them to, to the farm, take them to wash cars, you know, things men do, I don't know what you do, but mm -hmm. you know, wash cars. <laughs> My husband takes the kids to, to his businesses. <laughs> he takes them and, you know, they see how he hustles. They mm. really see. One time my son told me, Mommy, 500 shillings is so valuable. I looked at this 17-year-old, like, Jordan, what do you mean? Hey, man, we went with Daddy at the bakery. We own a bakery. We went with Daddy and we were counting coins, so many coins. <laughs> and then... In one of the hoveras, they were bundling them in 100,000. Mm. In one of them, there was 500 missing. And we needed the 500 to be able to buy flour for the next day. I said, so you and daddy, what did you decide? Eh, daddy said, we have to look for it. And 500 became a problem. Then I understood, mommy, why sometimes you refuse to give us 1,000. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is clear. Mm. I think that's what I would say. Most importantly, um, single parents allow God to parent with you. Mm. Yeah, allow God to parent with you. Uh, we see Ruth in the Bible. We see Ruth in the Bible. Naomi, mm. Naomi lost her husband, lost her kids, her two boys, and end, ends up mothering a daughter-in-law. Opa lives, but we see her now parenting Ruth, and we see the role of a mother in a child who has lost a husband, who doesn't have a future. We see Naomi and Ruth, we see the dynamics of a single parent. We see her playing a very big role in Ruth getting the husband. We see her playing a very big role in mothering uh, the great-great-grandmother of Jesus, great-great-grandfather of Jesus. So I want to say that single parents have a place in God's heart, they still have a mission, those children can become great people. It is not uh, something that uh, everybody wishes to, but if you're there, don't crucify yourself for what you did not wish mm. to do. Well, uh, we want to look at bonding. Mm -hmm. Father, son, father, daughter, mother, son. Mm -hmm. How best can these guys bond uh, so that you just don't know what you're doing outside there, but this 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 stuff is just going head on. Yeah. And then you just because sometimes we we don't get feedback so easily. Yeah. But there's somebody benefiting out there. Yeah. How can somebody easily bond with their family, uh, more so in this 21st century, mm. where everybody has a smartphone, where everybody is is busy. Others are busy on Okuiriba, mm. so everything hustling. is the way, <laughs> hustling the here and there. How, uh, let's discuss bonding. Bonding. Oh, I'm going to talk about something I learned from a program called Ndoa. Ndoa is done by a church called Mavuno. It's a marriage mm. program for husbands and wives. I really recommend it. Highly Christian. But um, one of the things they taught us in Doha is that you need to have a family mission. Family mission statements. The way companies, we go to for retreats, eh? we go for retreats, we spend days there, we do values, vision, what, mission. You break it down until you have the right words that really specify how you want the world to see you and where you're taking the direction of the company. Same thing with your family. You are the head of the family, Emmanuel. You're supposed to create a mission statement for your family. You're supposed to come up with the values of your family. How should the Yarugaba family look like? So you're supposed to build a legacy. One of the things we agreed with my husband when we got married is that we were starting the Yarugaba legacy. My father in love was a very great man and I respect him, rest in peace. But we agreed that he had done a good job already. 
and, and we agreed that my husband had to start another legacy of the Biarugawas. So we agreed, what does the Biarugawa legacy look like? So based on the legacy that we want to build, now we work backwards. How do we make this happen? So you agree on simple things like praying together. We have to go to church. You know, simple things. We pray together. We go to church. We respect one another. We value each other's contribution, you know, because everybody's important, including Christiana, who is eight years old. You know, Christiana has uh, tendencies of when she's not happy about something, you will know she voices. She voices her, her feelings and all. So we agreed we're going to create an open space where we talk about these things. Simple things like we'll have a meal together. Simple things like we'll pray together. Simple things like we'll do Bible study together. Now, because we are busy, sometimes we cannot do all the things we agree to do. But I can assure you, even when we are not there, our children will do those things. For example, this holiday we are learning the book of Daniel. And from the book of Daniel, we are supposed to get the mark of distinction. What makes Daniel stand out? And I told my children, you want to read one chapter a day and you will tell us at the end of the day, when we are praying, what did you learn? The first day, our eight-year-old came and said, Mommy, these things are hard. Me, I have not understood anything. And I can't blame her. The Bible is heavy for a child. So I got the Bible and I started reading with her. Then I drew pictures. I would draw, which king is this? This is Nebuchadnezzar. Which king is this? This is king so and so. Which country is this? Is coming from Babylon. Is going to Judah. Huh? Who have they taken? They've taken captives. What is a captive? But me, I was drawing for her. Mommy, it's simple. That's how you bond. Through reading together, cooking together, making meals together. Last week, because um, the children are on holiday, Emanuela made, made uh, very nice chapatis, but I didn't know she had made them, so she came and served me. And I enjoyed them. I said, hey, because I was not in the kitchen, she made breakfast and brought chapati. And I asked her, hmm? who made this? Mommy, I made them. I'm like, really? I made the whole breakfast. I said, you made this? And it was excellent. But guess what? We've had a lot of time in the kitchen together, bonding. Cut, how do you cut onions? So my daughter likes saying, Mommy, the onions are going in my eyes. That's the younger one. So how do you bond? Do things together. My husband washes cars with the sons. You know, wash clothes together. Do things together. Anything, eat together, pray together, uh, play together. Play. You know, when our son was turning 10, the older one, we made a party for him at the forest park. And it had, a, it had like a play area and a, a, a boat, whatever area. Now, that time, my husband was so busy. But that day, he's like, hey, I'm going to be there the whole day. So they said, Dad, we're going to tackle you playing football. I was like, let me watch. The guy played so well. This boy is 17 now. He has never forgotten that day. The one, two, three days, because my husband is normally very, very busy, but he has his moments when he's there. So create your moments. Now, because me, I'm more available, me, I build even more. Now, I'll tell you, like Mother's Day, we, we took a gift to my mom. We called the, my mother in love, because she's in Kabbalah. We called together very early in the morning, sent the gift mobile money. Now, my mom, we didn't call her because we were going. They saw me buy the gifts. They saw me buy the flower. Mm -hmm. they, we drove all the way to Muziga. And I told them we are spending exactly 10 minutes giving the gift and going out. We gave the gift. So you see they are learning that you buy a gift. You present it like this. You understand? They were hugged. They took photos. And then we said, Grandma, we are going. Then I got an opportunity for more bonding. There was a pool game outside. I said, this is an opportunity. I said, let me spare another 30 minutes. They had never played pool. My dad now, grandfather gets his bonding moment. This is how you hold that. You know? And then the, child, the younger child is not playing. Then the grandmom comes in and says, no, 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 give Christiana. Do you see? So the bond is now being created. I was just intentionally making sure these grandparents also need their bond. Mm -hmm. So create opportunities. Take your children to the grandparents. Take them to the uncles, the aunties. Call people to your home. 
our, our family has a rotational visit. You know, my husband's family. We visit families rotationally. So we visit the fa last month we were at the big sister's home, Auntie Eva's. Next month we'll go to uh, Uncle Obe. I mean, Uncle, we'll see, Uncle Asaf. Another month we'll go to Auntie Sharon. Another month we'll go to Auntie Maureen. So the children get to meet, they bond. Oh, this is how Uncle Didan behaves. This is how Auntie Maureen behaves. This is how Auntie Sheila behaves in their home, you know, because they found them in their comfort zone. You will never bond unless you do that. Mm. Give opportunities for people to fail also. Mm. Also, bonding comes from failing. How do you handle failure? We've had, for us, we've had opportunities where someone doesn't perform to the expectations of the family. And you look at Max and you're like, eh, these Max don't represent us very well. But we have to work through that also. So you bond through the good and the bad. We've had opportunities when we don't have jobs. I lose a job, he loses a job. And the money is not enough. And our children see us in the seasons when the money is not enough. And we have to tell them that it's God who will provide. And they see God coming through. So be open. I, you can't bond by pretending. We tell them, this is not a good season. Daddy doesn't have a job. It's not a good season. Mommy doesn't have a job. Uh, but we can still afford to take you to school. So don't worry. What we shall do is we shall cut down here. Maybe we'll not buy you new shoes. Mm -hmm. Then they get to know the realities of life, that I will not have everything I want all the time. And, that and is life. I will also learn to depend on God. Show them your God. We love to show our children our God. Mm. We have moments when we celebrate new things. They saw us when we entered our new house. Oh my God. A child seeing their bedroom for the first time, the joy. This is going to be my bedroom. Mommy, I like the paints. You know, bonding opportunity. Mm. We visited that house when it was bricks up, all the way up, and we were praying together, all the way up, roofing, all the way up, get. Then we entered, no, no pavers, next, like that. And, and the journey last. goes on. Very interesting. And the journey things. goes on. I was just noting a few things here, if you <laughs> noticed. Uh, do some reading together, do some cooking, but bottom line, do stuff together. Together. <laughs> uh, do stuff together. Whatever you do, do it with them. Uh, that will uh, help them learn where what they see comes from. I agree. Yeah. Uh, would you like to share with us what the mission statement of the Biarugabas looks like, <laughs> or probably their core values, or maybe uh, uh, their vision, so that we have an example that somebody out there can, can look at and probably get something in that line and work backwards. If we start that, it's a whole topic. Oh. Yeah. But I'll, not, I'll only tell you uh, what we use as the parents. Mm. Yeah, because when I look at your clock, we will not finish. But I'll just tell you what we decided to do as a couple. We decided that we shall be a model couple for others. That was 19 years ago. Mm. Yeah. That one statement of we shall be a model couple for others has given us opportunities to mentor very many couples and we can name them now from modeling now we went down to the other values there are many four minutes i cannot finish but the core thing have the one statement mm. when you say we want to be a model couple then i have to be careful with every how i beat behave of that you do. yes how i behave and mrs Yarugawa, proudly i swore an affidavit as soon as I got married, I swore an affidavit. I am Mrs. Charity. Changed everything. ID, passport. You know people are still using their maiden names. Me, I swore an affidavit. Went to the lawyer. Affidavit, done. Next, pa passport changed. ID changed everything. So when I say we're going to be a model couple, then we have a lot of work. It means I have to submit to authority. 
and I love my husband. <laughs> he always says, you know, women struggle with submission. Yeah? But there's a time we had a Mother's Day breakfast, which was focused on families, and so we invited husbands and wives. And so my husband was speaking. And when he first spoke, he, he took me off guard. He said, wives here like saying, wives submit, but the Bible says submit to one another. Before you go to sub wives submit, it starts with submit to one another in love, in reverence to Christ. Mm, actually, they skip verse 21. They skip it and come Ephesians to this other one. Five, and they go to Can verse imagine 22. Biarugaba, that was his key focus. He said, submit to one another. So he said, me, I submit to my wife, and my wife submits to me. Now they come to wives submit. So it becomes easier. Because you're both submitting to one another, and it's in reverence to Christ. Mm. You and it's, it's literally hard to submit, for the wife to submit yeah. if there is no submission from the man to the woman yeah. in reverence to God. So that's why I said if we start mission, vision, Michi, you don't even have the first principles, then you're wasting time. First work on the first simple things. One core statement that will keep the two of you together will keep you in check. Yeah, will keep you in check, will keep you in focus will keep you in direction. Then now start those things of mission. Look for me, I'm here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm available. I'm available. Uh, so if you but want to, we start now. Uh, uh, the two minutes can't do any much. No, uh, um, uh, so if you, if, you, if you need her... Uh, uh, you, Go on you, Facebook, you, you, Twitter, you'll wherever. See, you'll see her Twitter account uh, on, on, the lo, on the lower third. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, so that uh, there you go. So you should be able to follow her, follow her, and uh, you, you should be able to catch up with her. We have two minutes to sign out. Mm. You take up the one minute. What would be your last word, your last bullet on a thriving family? You really want me to end with that? I'm going to end with something different, but it's on a thriving family. Okay. John Maxwell says. Everything rises and falls on leadership. And my friend Samuel Bakutana, the head of Father's Union in the whole of Uganda, the president, says, if your leadership fails at home, don't try it elsewhere. So for us to have thriving families, it's an issue of leadership. Everything rises and falls on leadership. If you want your family to thrive, leadership. Offer leadership and Emmanuel, you're the leader. You're I leadership. love to say, leader, lead thyself. Uh -huh. So women lead yourselves and men lead us. And we shall have thriving families. Careful with some of the statements here because you want to internalize them further and further so that you don't find yourself in a ditch. It has been a beautiful time discussing a lot of stuff here about family, mothers motherhood and lots of stuff of that kind <laughs> and i want to promise you the next time we'll be here discussing something of this kind uh charity will be here with me <laughs> uh, i want to hope you've had a beautiful time it's uh, almost nine and uh, almost ten i beg your pardon and so we can't be here beyond now for my and the team it's a good night god bless you god bless uganda and do everything possible to make sure you add value to yourself so that you make yourself a better person for God and my country.